Hi, this is Kevin Garlington, and welcome to the second part of this video series on the three keys to having a more powerful forehand. Now, if you remember in the first video, if you haven't seen that, go and watch that now because we're going to build on that video. In that video, we talked about having a great ba having great balance and how uh, balance is the key to having great rotation. And without those two things, you can't hit a big forehand. So if you haven't seen that video, go up in the the box right here and uh, check that one out because that's huge. You got to watch that. Now, in this video, I'm going to go over the three key technical things that you need to do to produce more power. This is awesome. This is going to be an awesome video because I've shared these tips after I learned them with all my players and it made a dramatic difference. So key number one, we're going to work from the legs up, is how do we leverage our body more? What does that mean, leverage? That means where I add a little bit of force and I get a lot of force on the other side. This is the key to having a bigger forehand. I think a lot of recreational players see pros hitting the ball and they wonder how do they hit the ball so hard and they don't look like they're working that hard. Well, it comes from leveraging your body. It's not working hard, it's not muscling your body. It's setting up your body in a natural way that lets you uncoil into the ball faster. So the first thing we're gonna do is talk about your feet, how you set up your feet. Now, in this video, I'm only gonna go over one stance, which is the open stance. You can do the same thing on the closed stance, um, but we're only gonna go over the open stance today. So what I wanna talk about is first, how do you set up to hit an open stance? So this means I've moved to the ball and I've gotten to the ball, how do I set up? This little change that you can make in how you set up your toe can change everything as far as having more power in your forehand. Because what I'm gonna show you how to do is produce more leverage, more coil in your stomach, which now you can use to rotate into the ball. So let's just go over the, uh, the normal open stance. Now, when we go out to hit an open stance, usually we set up here. Now, if you notice, if you remember back to the first video I talked about just facing a different direction isn't coiling. A lot of times you see this and you go, oh yeah, I'm, I'm ready, I'm loaded, I'm coiled. Well, really you're not. You can use the stance, you can hit a forehand, but if you want to add more power and have more, more rotation racket at speed, the key tip is how you set up your feet, how you set up your toe. And what I mean by, if you notice, my toe's facing this direction. And what that does is it keeps my hips facing this direction and my shoulders facing this direction. They're both facing the same direction, just like I am now. So there's no coil. So what we have to do to leverage it is when we finally get to the ball and we're taking our last step, we're gonna angle our foot back in the court just a little bit. It's not an exaggeration, just a little bit. By angling your foot back in the court, it's gonna have my hips facing this way. And now when I'm rotated now, you're gonna feel more tension. By having more tension here, now you can actually uncoil faster. That's the key, that's it. By just changing your toe position just by almost 45 degrees, just a little bit from here to here, you're gonna add more power because now your hips are facing this direction instead of this direction, and you can use your, your stomach and your core to uncoil into the ball. That's the first tip. So make sure the next time you go out, practice this one by itself, first of all, and see the difference. Okay, see the difference in stepping here, having my toe facing this way, and stepping here at your last step and having the, uh, my toe facing slightly inside the court. Key number two is how we rotate our shoulders. I call this shoulder to shoulder rotation. This is a great way to make sure you've rotated enough. So again, we're gonna talk about the open stance. This applies to the closed stance, it's almost the exact same thing. So for the open stance, when I'm set up again, a lot of times I see people, even if they have the legs set up here, which adds more power, but another element is how they get into their unit turn or how they coil. I see this a lot, okay? You may look, oh, what's wrong with that? Well, you're missing, you're, you're losing this much rotation. By tucking my, uh, my chin or my shoulder on my chin, I get more rotation. Also, this takes my shoulders and pushes it back more, keeps my hips forward more. This is more leverage that I can use to uncoil into the ball. A lot of times what I see is people are here, okay? So again, if you look at my body, you look at my shoulders, they're facing this direction. Maybe you can't tell from the camera. I'll do it sideways. But if I'm here with my arm facing straight, my shoulders are going this way, my hips are going this way, there's not a lot of rotation. Compared to if I go from shoulder, one shoulder, and I'm gonna finish to the other shoulder, you're gonna see a lot more rotation. That's the key again. Having shoulder to shoulder rotation will add even that much more power to your stroke, okay? The final tip I have for you is how you swing. Okay, a lot of times um, I've said in previous videos that you shouldn't swing low to high. And let me be very specific about that. 
Learning tennis and swinging low to high is great. You know, it's a great way to start, but it's not the way you're going to get to having a powerful forehand. If you watch, I would say 99% of the pros, you hardly ever see anyone finish up here. Their finishes are going to go down here, somewhere between their uh, shoulder and their hips. Nothing up here. Now, this is a great teaching tool to learn how to stay with the ball, but after you learn how to stay with the ball, your swing is going to finish a lot lower. The key though in the swing is how you're swinging. If you notice here, I'm swinging up on the ball. Okay, again, a great teaching tool, but to, to advance your forehand past that basic point, we want to start learning to swing what I call across your body from the inside to the outside of the ball. Okay, again, when we watch videos in video number three, you're going to see all these players, they're swinging across their body. Okay, they're not swinging low to high. Okay, you will hardly ever see any pro swing low to high. You're swinging everybody's, you're seeing everybody swing across their body. There's a reason for this. There's a point of leverage, or really that by swinging low to high, you're gonna notice that the length in which I swing is very short, okay? And the leverage, how I can, let's say, pull the racket, is, is really not, I can't really put a lot behind that, okay? The difference between swing across your body now, you're using your muscles, you're engaging your muscles coming across your body this way, you're using your biceps, you're using your hips, you're using your, your toe, how we set that up. And not only that, we can keep this leverage position of your wrist behind the ball longer, okay, compared to here. Just feel the difference. Take your racket out if you have it close and feel the difference between swing here, how hard it is to swing there, and how fast you can swing here. Also, you see how long the, the swing is. Since it's a little bit longer, I don't have to slow down as quick. Since it's slower here, I'm gonna start slowing my swing down here. If I, whenever you start slowing your swing down, that means I had to stop the, or slow it down back here to get there, okay? If I swing across my body, by the time I'm slowing my racket down, the ball's already gone, okay? This is the third key, making sure that we're swinging low to high, from the inside to the outside and across the ball, okay? Making sure that we really add these three elements together. It looks like this. If we're hitting an open stance, I have my toe position pointing slightly inside the court. I have my shoulder to shoulder position here, and I'm going to swing across my body. These are the three keys to having a powerful forehand. Go out, practice one at a time until you get each one, and then combine it. You're gonna notice a huge difference in the amount of racketed speed you can hit, the power you're gonna be hitting on the ball. You're gonna also notice a huge difference in the amount of effort you have to use to hit the ball hard. This is the key. If you have any questions about anything that was said in this video, please leave a comment below. I want you to go out, practice these things, and play tough. This is Kevin Garlington, ForehandDomination.com.